What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Rec Nation. And listen, right now we have how the U.S. military smoked Russian mercenaries. I am here for this kind of stuff. Let's do it. Let's check this out. If I'm going to see anything for the first time, it's going to be with you guys. So without any further ado, let's bring it up onto the screen. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. When the first vehicle in the convoy suddenly blew up, the Russian mercenaries knew something was wrong. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> right out the gate. Right out the gate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what will happen. There's, a, You get so, like, one-dimensional when you're in, you forget that there's shit almost up in space watching you and so it's just all of a sudden you're having a good day having a decent day doing mercenary shit and all of a sudden you're you're one of your one of your vehicles just gets deleted out of nowhere and you're like where the fuck did that come from fuck, fuck yeah oh god did they start hearing the Guns N' Roses, Welcome to the Jungle, right after that hit? It's like, what? Where's that music coming from? Jeez. Objective to capture an oil field in eastern Syria was supposed to be a routine mission. The enemy, they knew by then, would have fled long ago at the sight of 500 battle-hardened Russian and Syrian fighters. But instead, the attack had come to an abrupt halt, and explosion after explosion shook the ground. It wasn't long before AC-130 gunships Predator drones, Apache helicopters, and fighter jets were circling over the battlefield, <laughs> pounding the attackers from every imaginable angle. What the Russian forces didn't know was that the oil field was not defended by any fighters, but by American special operations forces, supported by the most powerful air force in the world. That's a bad day. That's a bad day. So do they not know? Where they're just like, oh yeah, oil field. Let's get that. They're going to run away when we show force. And all of a sudden, they roll out. And their armored vehicles just start getting, getting deleted left and right. Then there was no, hey guys, that's just like, let, what, what just happened? Let's talk about this. There's no coming together. Like, can we just see what, why our armored vehicles just got deleted? What is going on? This is a terrible breakdown in communication if they didn't know. I'm banking on the fact that they knew exactly what they were doing. And so, within a few minutes, the routine mission turned into hell on earth and into one of the deadliest engagements for the notorious Russian mercenary group Wagner. To stop the rapid advance of the self-proclaimed Islamic State, the U.S. had deployed troops in Syria since 2014. They supported the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces, or SDF. A year later, Russia also intervened in the fight against ISIS, but on the side of Assad's Syrian government forces. The SDF and the Syrian army were never seen as allies, but in keeping with the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, both parties at least mostly avoided each other. After years of fighting, both armies managed to drive out the terrorists, and by 2018, ISIS held only a fraction of its original bases. To prevent an unintended conflict between Russian and U.S.-supported armies, a deconfliction line was formed along the Euphrates River, which effectively bisects Syria. In addition, both parties were able to contact each other through special telephone channels that were kept clear at any time. But despite all these precautions, on February 7th, just a few miles from the Euphrates River, the first deadly clash between Russians and Americans since the Cold War occurred. Late in the evening of February 7, 2018, 500 Russian and Syrian fighters attacked an SDF military base. The base was located about five miles east of the Euphrates River and controlled one of the country's main oil fields. Thus, like most oil fields, the area was officially on the Syrian Democratic side of the ceasefire line but this did not stop the Syrian-Russian troops in any way. The attackers were supported by various Russian-made battle tanks, as well as mortars, artillery, and rocket launchers, with which they began shelling the SDF base without warning. In addition, Russian Air Force aircraft were on standby to provide air support, but initially remained on the ground. However, while everything was initially going according to plan for the attacking forces, the phone suddenly rang in the Russian headquarters near the Euphrates. 
A representative of the U.S. military was on the line and wanted to know whether Russian fighters were currently trying to take the military base at the Conoco oil fields. Here, not only the Syrian Democratic Forces were under heavy artillery fire, but also their allies, American Green Berets, Army Rangers, Marines, and various support units. <laughs> Oh, you chose the wrong people to go up against. You chose the wrong people to go up against. That's for damn After sure. After the man. Russians had explicitly denied the question whether the enemy were their troops, it was clear to the caller. Whoever was currently taking fire at his soldiers, he would feel the full force of the American military in just a few moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so, but that's, that's what's happening, right? It, all right, that's what's happening. So, paint, paint, paint the picture. All of a sudden, shit starts going boom, catching on fire, right? They're like, what is this? Where, where is this coming from? Let's get on a, hey, there's only one person, one, one, one team that this could be. Let's, let's call the Russians. Russians, is this you guys? Nah, man. Like, are you positive this is not you guys? 100%. And they probably recorded this shit. They're like, no, it's not me. Okay. Well, guess what? We're about to we're about to give whoever's attacking a, a very, very big headache. The response to the attack on their military base was prompt and tremendous. Even before the Russian convoy reached its starting position for the attack, the first and last vehicles were taken out in a classic ambush maneuver, trapping the forces in the middle. The missiles came from an American Reaper drone, which had been targeting the convoy for some time. However, to the Russian Wagner mercenaries on the ground, the drone was invisible, and they had a hard yeah. time understanding where the fire suddenly came from. It didn't take long for more shells to hit, spreading chaos on the battlefield. Oh my God. American artillery and high Mars rocket launchers engaged the convoy, inflicting numerous casualties. <laughs> While the Russian forces were still trying to realize what was happening, four Apache helicopters appeared on the horizon. Although the gunships were several miles away, no one could hide from their precise infrared optics. The laser-guided Hellfire <laughs> missiles found their target in the Russian battle tanks, while the 30-millimeter cannon forced the enemy infantry to withdraw. Few of them were able to escape the explosive shells, and a Russian survivor later reported that they suffered about 200 casualties within the first few minutes, That's almost crazy. half of the entire attack force. The reports that are on TV about, well, you know, about Syria and the 25 people that are wounded there from the Syrian army, and, well, to make it short, we've had our kicked. So one squadron lost 200 people. Right away, another one lost 10 people. And I don't know about the third squadron, but it got torn up pretty badly too. So three squadrons took a beating. The Yankees attacked. First, they blasted the out of us by artillery. And then they took four helicopters up and pushed us in a merry-go-round with heavy caliber machine guns. They were all shelling the holy out of it. And our guys didn't have anything besides the assault rifles. Nothing at all, not even mentioning shoulder fired Sams or anything like that. So they tore us to pieces for sure, put us through hell. And the Yankees knew for sure that the Russians were coming, that it was us, Russians. Our guys were coming to commandeer an oil refinery and the Yankees were holding it. We got our beat rough. My men called me and they're there drinking now. Many have gone missing. <laughs> Why? Oh, in what world? In what world, in what world would you be able to, to pry an oil field out of the U.S.'s hands? I get it if it was just Syrians, right? And they're like, oh, these guys, I got them. Man, do your due diligence, bro. You guys are insane. Granted, I understand what's happening, right? Probably the Russian government was like, hey, Wagner Group, here you go. Do this will make you make a billionaires or some bullshit lie. Right. And if it's kind of like if you get caught, you're basically we don't know you existed. You're on your own. This is a 100 percent suicide mission that did not work. Didn't even get close.
It's a total yeah. It yeah. sucks. Another takedown. While AC-130 gunships circled over the battlefield engaging individual targets, large B-52 strategic oh, bombers Jesus. completely destroyed the convoy. <laughs> Those who managed to escape hid oh. in buildings, but even there, they were not safe for long. <laughs> Late the into the night, the attackers were hunted by F-15 <laughs> fighter jets, whose bombs penetrated even the best cover. The new fifth-generation air superiority fighter F-22 Raptor was also used, but for the soldiers on the ground, it no longer made any difference who was pounding them. The Russian contractors did not stand a chance against the American Air Force. Although there were rumors that some pilots from the nearby Russian air base were asking for permission to take off, the blue-painted Su-34s and 35s remained on the ground. Yeah. The attackers' casualties were so heavy that in the middle of the battle, one of the Russian commanders called in and asked for a ceasefire, indicating that Russian military was in contact with the attacking fighters after all. <laughs> a published call from a Wagner mercenary sums up events in Syria. Just had a call with a guy. So they basically formed a convoy, but didn't get to their positions by some 300 meters. One unit moved forward. The convoy remained in place about 300 meters from the others. The others raised the American flag, and their artillery started ours really hard. Then their choppers flew in and started everybody. <laughs> ours just running around. Just got a call from a pal, so they're about 215 killed. They simply rolled ours out hard, <laughs> made their point. What the f ours were hoping for in there? Yeah. That they'll f***ing run away themselves? Hope to f***ing scare them away? Lots of people f***ing so bad they can't be f***ing ID'd. There were oh, no foot man. soldiers on the American side. They simply f***ed our convoy with artillery. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's, uh, it's, it's... <laughs> what are you doing, bro? You, uh, <laughs> that's te like guys, like we own unfor like I'm not unfortunately. Fuck it, we own the skies, we own the night. That's and people just forget about that. You don't need daylight to see when you're using thermal, <laughs> like, and if we if we can bomb you, if we can reach out and touch you before you get anywhere near us. That's what's gonna happen, and it looks like the person gave gave this group carte blanche. They're like, all of it. How much are we gonna spend on this little sending rockets and missiles and scrambling everyone up in the air? Yes, go for it. Prove a point. Prove a point. Throw the book at them. Make them unidentifiable with no mercy run into a building guess what <laughs> point click delete building <laughs> just absolutely insane dude oh when the battle ended early next morning there was nothing left of the convoy of vehicles all combat vehicles have been destroyed with the exception of a single battle tank and armored personnel carrier of approximately 500 Russian and Syrian attackers, at least 200 were killed or wounded. One of the mercenaries later reported that in some places they found solidified melted sand and gun barrels <laughs> bent from the heat. Oh, God. There were no casualties on the American side and no reports of damaged aircraft. Only one of the SDF soldiers in the base at the oil field was wounded by Russian fire, but survived. The incident sparked outrage on both Russian and Syrian sides, but since the Americans had repeatedly reassured themselves through the Russian officials, they could not be blamed. <laughs> you have direct channels like, hey, there's my recording. Is it you guys? Is it you guys? Repeatedly no. Repeatedly no. What do you think was going to happen? According to intercepted phone calls between the leader of Wagner and Russian ministers, the attack was even said to be an order from Moscow. Yeah. For Wagner Group fighters, the Battle of Conoco Fields went down in history as Red February and was one yeah. of their most humiliating engagements. At least some of them received a medal specially made for this event. 
What? It shows a Russian soldier surrounded by flames, heroically shooting at an American Apache helicopter. A scene that... <laughs> I'm so sorry. That is the most slap in the face metal out there. It's like the dumbass award. What are you doing? Here's here's a medal for your bravery. <laughs> Getting your ass handed to yourself from thousands of feet away. <laughs> I would just take that and just fling it. He's like, let's not talk about this ever. And the fact that you survived is absolutely a miracle. There's a look at that. Look at like, can you guys see this? Like, look at how ridiculous that is. Like, look at that. Look at that. Look at look at my dude right here. Fighting Apaches and flames. Like, what? <laughs> the best outcome of this is that you survived. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, man. God. That probably never took place in this way. The Syrian Democratic Forces and their American allies had successfully defended the base at the oil field and continued to fortify it. The demonstration of their superior air power was meant to be a warning to any hostile yeah. forces not to mess with the wrong people. Interestingly, when Syrian and Russian fighters gathered in the area again about a month later, the Americans once more contacted the Russian commander in charge. This time, it was not long after the end of the phone call that the entire Russian-Syrian fighting force hastily withdrew. Yeah. yeah. For those... <laughs> it's like, hey, is this you guys? Oh, shit. Get them out. Here we go again. Goodness. Who made it this far? Thanks for watching. If you want to help us produce more content, feel free to leave a like and tell us what you think of the attack on the U.S. base. Did the Russian military know it was their own mercenaries? Yeah, they did, dude. They, yeah, they did. They're just dumbasses because they don't give a shit about their people. What they think was going to happen. We're like, oh, shit, it's the Russians attacking. We should probably give them the oil field. Said no one ever. Said no one ever. Fucking Americans are like, let's turn this little bit of desert into glass. <laughs> let's go. Like, we get we get to we get to throw the book at someone and it's against the Russians. Freaking bald eagles were released in the air that day. Holy crap! I love that. That's crap. I mean, it's crazy. It's what do you th what did they think was gonna happen? <laughs> the, the fact that two hundred survived is absolutely amazing. Because how do you defend from an enemy you can't see or touch and you're just getting rained down upon with the full budget of the U.S. military? I'm pretty sure if we could have, we would have sent a boat. <laughs> we would have sent at least a couple hovercrafts to show the full might. Like, what the fuck is a boat doing in the middle of the desert? Exactly. <laughs> because we can. Oh, man. You know what I heard? I heard another um, interesting snippet is that the, the person in charge of verifying that there were Russians or not Russians, right? And they called back after this after this was done, called the Russian <laughs> embassy, or not the embassy, but the Russian, um, the Russian contingent, right? And they're like, you're right. There are no Russians in this area anymore <laughs> like a big yeah no you're right there were none there are none not now <laughs> not now that's for damn sure jesus jesus what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing obliterates not smoked obliterated yeah no 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 that's that's terrifying that's terrifying like just just understand that like, if you put your 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 feet in the other people's shoes the russian shoes you're just hey man we got all these armored vehicles we're untouchable and all of a sudden shit starts getting real and you can't see who's who's sending who's sending the pain <laughs> just like when shit just starts blowing up randomly we're watching you pretty much like <laughs> like yeah yeah
You know who exact you know who you're attacking when random shit just starts blowing up. That's what I'm saying. They should have just been like, "Whoa, we're done. Come back." But they I guess they had to prove their point. They're like, "Hey, let's get a a participation medal at the end of this, guys." Anyway. Anyway, guys, I I this was awesome. This was Ah, this is one of those stories, man. This is one of those stories. <laughs> oh man anyway much love guys thanks for rocking with me thank you for rocking with the channel this is all in 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 we are starting to get more content on the channel i swear stick with me guys thank you so much you all are legends make sure you unplug and do something legendary and i will see you on the next video later guys